capacity to be blessed. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. So meaning if you are not living a, 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 a life of a blessing, hallelujah, then you are not living according to the declaration of the blessing that the Lord declared upon humanity. Hallelujah. You ought to 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 pray for that manifestation of Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. Hallelujah. That that must take forth upon your life, especially the minute you become a child of God. Once you separate yourself and you say now you are no longer of this earth, but you are now becoming, you have now become a child of God. You have now been rebirthed. Hallelujah. Now when you speak of the word restoration, it means there was something before. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So something is being returned to its former position. Hallelujah. To its former owner. Hallelujah. To its former place. Hallelujah. So meaning the minute you become a child of God. Now we speak of salvation. Where you declare with your own mind, mouth. That you are no longer of this earth. You are no longer of devil. But you have now become the child of God. Hallelujah. You are now uh, uh, declaring that the Lord Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. And you admit that he died for you at the cross of Calvary. He died and rose on the third day. Hallelujah. So that you may be restored back to your former position hallelujah hallelujah of authority and dominion of rulership over all creation because man was given dominion dominion and authority to rule over these three dimensions hallelujah hallelujah but because of sin sin made us to lose that authority and dominion hallelujah that made us to lose our sonships and, uh, and, 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 and as, as daughters and sons of the most high god so we did not only use lose the position of authority on these three dimensions that was given unto us, but we also lost our position as the sons of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the minute we accept Jesus as our Lord and personal Savior, then there is a restoration process. There is a rebirth process. We are repositioned back to our former position. So when you speak of re, it means there was, there was a position before, but it was lost. So when you, if you're going to separate the restoration and say re, and then put a hyphenation and say rest, then say restoration and say re, and then put a hyphen and then storation. So meaning this thing was there before. You were in position before. You were in authority and dominion before. You were the son and the daughter of the Most High God born before. But something happened. Now for God to put us back, there had to be a restoration, a restoration that takes place. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. So when the Lord is saying he is a God of restoration, he says when you accept him as your Lord and personal Savior, whatsoever that you have lost when you were in sin, when you were out of position, when you were out of alignment, the Lord will bring all those things into great alignment. Whatsoever that is out of position in your life, in your family, in your personal life, hallelujah, everything will be put back into its proper position. Because when we are out of position, there's a misalignment that takes place. There's misplacement that takes place. Hallelujah. There's something that you lose. Position of authority and dominion. Hallelujah. So now when you accept the Lord Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, who came to restore you back to God, then everything that you lost, when you were lost, it will be restored. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. So there will be a rebirth process. You will be born again. Restored back to Christ. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. So the reason why the Lord is teaching about you about him being a god of restoration is for you to understand that god restores 
God, the, the, I want you to understand that the, the, the Lord's desire is to restore to us. God's desire is to restore to us as individuals that which Satan and sin have stolen from us. Hallelujah. Because when you read Psalms 51, Psalms 51, it's all about being broken before the Lord. So meaning for you to be restored, there has to be a process of brokenness. So when you read Psalms 51, Psalms 51 was written by David when he was going through the hard time. And that is a, a prayer for, for him asking for God to forgive him. But that was his moment of brokenness. So meaning for you to be restored, you must go through a process of brokenness. There's a recognition process that you realize that you were out of position. You realize that uh, 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 God was not the centerpiece of your life. You realize that you were living in sin. So now you are in the process of repentance. You are in the process of brokenness. You are in the process of seeking the forgiveness from the Lord. So this is what David was doing. When the prophet of the Lord came and told him about what the sin that he has committed, the sin of abomination that David committed. When he had so many wives, then he took a one and only wife of that man and he killed the man to get the wife. So when the prophet of the Lord, Nathan, came to tell him of the act that he has done and he realized his sin and he went into repentance, he went into consecration, he fasted, he prayed, seeking for the Lord to forgive him. So he was in the process of brokenness. So for you to be restored by God, for you to be restored back to Christ, whatever sin that you might have committed, the Lord is merciful and graceful to forgive you of all of your sins. We serve a God who is a merciful God. There is no sin that is above God. The Lord will forgive whatever sin that you might have committed. So Psalms 51 was the cry from David before the Lord, seeking the Lord to restore him. Hallelujah. I love verse 12 when he says, Give me back the joy of your salvation. Keep me strong by giving me a willing spirit. Verse 13, Then I will teach your ways to those who do wrong, and sinners will turn back to you. Hallelujah. But verse 12 says, Give me back the joy of your salvation. Because somehow, somehow he realized that he lost his way with God. Maybe through being blessed, now being in the palace as a king, he had everything that he wanted. Because the Lord was confused that why would you go and take a wife of a man who has only one wife when I've given you so many wives? You even have concubines. Why would you do that? So now when you hear verse 12 says, give me back the joy of your salvation. So that means David recognized that somewhere along the way, he lost the joy. Somewhere along the way, he lost the fire he had for Christ. Hallelujah. So meaning that as a child of the Lord, there, is, there will be a process where in your walk of salvation with God, you might find yourself live, losing fire due to, due to the affliction from the enemy. Because the enemy always comes to quench our fire. Hallelujah. By making us commit sins against the Lord. And he knows once you do that, the hedge of protection that is around you will be broken. And then there will be an excess doors. There will be doors that will be open. Hallelujah. So that's why we ought to guide our hearts, our emotion, our thoughts. You guide what is entering your brain. What is enter, what you are entertaining in your thoughts. Don't allow the enemy to use your, 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 your mental state, your, 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 your brain as a, as a stewardship of his playground where he just comes and gives you any foolish thoughts. Now you expect somebody to do something for you, whether even another brethren, you are expecting them to do something and they didn't do it the way. And then the devil comes and gives you some thoughts that, no, you see why this person do this because they are abusing you and so forth. And you start entertaining all those thoughts. It's going to move from that level to another level where it's going to start making you see certain signs from that person. See, see how they are behaving and everything. You will create the movie and release it and, and, and edit it and release the, a full movie, which is an orchestrated a movie that is not a reality. Because you have allowed your thinking process, your brain to be the playing ground of the enemy. Hallelujah. So that is why we ought to guide our thoughts, our feelings, and our emotions. Don't always hand those things to God. 
said, Lord, I surrender my spirit, my soul, my heart, and my body, my mind, my imagination, my thinking process, my intellect, my will, and my emotions. All these things, we hand them over because that is where the enemy plays mostly because he just gives you thoughts. The minute you start entertaining those thoughts, you are finished. You are finished. We don't have to do some certain things. The Lord, in the Bible, the Lord says, men, they sin even by looking at a woman and lust over that woman. By men looking at a woman and undressing that woman. Oh, you as a woman. Sometimes the, the, the devil can, give, can, 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 can afflict you with the spirit of lust. And you are not even aware that you already have that spirit. Either it, he came through the dream and afflicted you. After that, the seed of that affliction the seed of that defilement and pollution start taking forth now you start seeing yourself looking at people at work and you start undressing people you start having sexual thoughts rebuke that spirit there and there so that it doesn't find room of expression hallelujah so that that seed gets aborted it doesn't find room to find expression to start a meaning it start operating hallelujah there are some thoughts you must never allow as a child of God to find room or to get to a stage where it becomes a normality that you see people in sexual way. Hallelujah. You can be praying the enemy can bring sexual thoughts, sexual images, rebuke all this. They say, I rebuke in the mighty name of Jesus. I cast you out of my mind and I put you to the bottomless of pit of hell where you belong in the mighty name of Jesus. This is the mind of Christ and I hand over my mind to the Lord. Hallelujah. To take over only the thoughts of God and shall dwell in my mind. Not any other thoughts. Even some, some, some talks that you will say, devil, you are a liar. It's not so. The person is not jealous of me. They are happy for me. Hallelujah. I'm not going to entertain that. I cast you out of my brain. I cast you out of my mind and I put you to the bottomless pit of hell where you belong. This is the mind of Christ. The Holy Spirit, take over my mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So there are some parts that we need to do as much as the enemy may come and try, but the ball is, un, is, is in our courts. Hallelujah. So the Lord led me to different stories in the Bible. He told me about the job story in chapter 42. Hallelujah. We are told of jobs, job, that the job, job was, 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 was attacked by the devil. Because the Lord was so proud of Job, being a righteous man in that time of his living, hallelujah, the Lord was so pleased with Job because he was a righteous man before the Lord and he did all offerings that needed to be done, even offerings that he did for his children in case they might have cast, cast God, hallelujah. So he even did offerings that in case... They might have said or done something that he's not aware of. He will even do those, those offerings of repentance on behalf of his children. Hallelujah. So when the Lord was boasting to the enemy, hallelujah, that see my, 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 my servant Job, how faithful he is. And then the enemy asked to tempt Job. And the Lord allowed it. Hallelujah. So in the story of Job, it, it, it explains to us that whatever afflictions we go through, there are some that the Lord had allowed because he trusts you. He knows what he has put on the inside of you. That whatsoever that the enemy might bring against you, but it will not move you from him. You will still remain faithful. Hallelujah. So there are temptations where the Lord allows because he trusts you. He knows who you are. He knows you more than you know yourself. Hallelujah. So the Lord allowed the devil to tempt Job. But we are told that after all the affliction, everything that Job undergo, the Lord restored everything back to him. In Job 42 verse 10 to 15, the Lord restores everything in double fold. So that's the good thing about God that when he does the restoration, he does it in a double fold. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. So he receives things, his fortune, all things that he has lost, he received them in double fold. But I want us to take note of the story of Job in chapter 42. That and at the time where the Lord, before he came and did the restoration, the Lord will rebuke the friends of Job. Because they did not uh, uh, encourage Job. They did not speak good of God. Job of God while Job was going through the process of hardship. The Lord expected them to speak more good of, of God while Job was in that process. Hallelujah. But the Lord was angry with them. Hallelujah. But now the only solution for God to forgive them of their wrong, wrongdoing was for them to offer certain sacrifices. So I want us to go to Job uh, 42, verse 7. Hallelujah. After the Lord has said these things to Job, he said to Elphaz, 
the Tamanites, I am angry with you and your two friends because you have not said what is right about me as my servant Job did. Verse 8, now take seven bulls and seven male sheep and go to my servant Job and offer a burnt offering for yourselves. My servant Job will pray for you and I will listen to his prayer. Then I will punish you for being foolish. You have not said what is right about me as my servant Job did. Verse 9, so Elphaz the Tamanite, Baldad the Shuhite, and Zaphara the Namanite did as the Lord said, and the Lord listened to Job's prayer. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. I want us to take note of that part, that because of the sin that the friends of Job had committed against the Lord by not speaking good about God to Job, while Job, the one who was afflicted, never spoke anything bad about God. He always exalted God. He always praised God. He said, whatever that has happened to me, if it's, it is destined by you Lord to happen let it be so hallelujah the only thing he spoke bad about was himself about him being born wishing that he was never born but the Lord was not happy with his friends because they were supposed to speak the opposite because they were not the ones experiencing the affliction hallelujah to God be the glory but there was a punishment that the Lord said they will still be punished for their foolishness but I want us to take note that there are situations whereby for the restoration to take place, there has to be a sacrificial offering that is offered. So not all restorations are not only going to be prayed for only. There are some restoration that requires sacrificial offering. There is an offering that you need to offer to give to the Lord in order for the Lord to restore you. Whatever kind of a sin that you might have committed, there are sins where the Lord, in order for God to do a restoration on your life, there is an offering, a sacrificial offering that you have to give. So the friends of Job had to offer an offering. Then the Lord led me also to the story of Naaman. Hallelujah. The one who suffered from leprosy. Hallelujah. So let's go to 2 Kings. To God be the glory. 2 Kings chapter 5. So we are told of Naaman, who was the commander of the army of the king of Arab. Hallelujah. He was honored by his master and he had much respect because the Lord used him to give victory to Aram. He was a mighty and a brave man, but he had a skin problem, leprosy. Hallelujah. That is in verse 1. Hallelujah. Uh, 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 2 Kings chapter 5 verse 1. Hallelujah. This was the commander of the army. He suffered, suffered from leprosy. Now, this story, the Lord wanted to demonstrate something. Now, the story of Job, we are told that the friends, for them to be restored, they needed to give sacrificial offerings for them to be restored back to their position as children of God. Hallelujah. To God be the glory for God to forgive them of their wrongdoing. Hallelujah. Because restoration comes because there is a fallen that has taken place. There is a sin that has taken place. So there can never be a restoration without any fault being committed, without any sin being committed. So restoration comes to restore what has been broken, to restore what has been lost, to restore what has been dispositioned, to restore what has been displaced, misaligned. Hallelujah. To God for his all lost. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. So now Naaman's story, a commander of the army, hallelujah, has suffered from leprosy. So his servant, uh, the, 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 the girl who was a servant, who was a slave working there, said there is a prophet of God who can harm the sickness, the disease that the, the commander has. So he took the advice and told his king they send him to go to prophet Elisha. And when he got there, hallelujah, in verse 10, Elisha sent Naaman a messenger who said, go and wash in the Jordan River seven times, then the skin will be healed and you will be clean, hallelujah. So the prophet of the Lord gave instruction for Naaman to go to the Jordan River and dig and dip himself seven times and then he'll be healed of leprosy, hallelujah. But he wasn't happy about that, but his uh, 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 um, um, slave encouraged him, hallelujah, 
his servant that he was working with encouraged him to go and do that and he did it in verse 14 so Naaman went down and dipped in the Jordan River seven times just as Elisha has said that the skin became a new new again like the skin of a child and he was clean he was healed from this after he adhered to the instruction hallelujah and then we are hearing that in verse 16 but Elisha said surely as the Lord lives whom I serve I won't accept anything the man asked him to take the gift he refused. Hallelujah. Now I want us to take note. Now in this instant on the issue of Naman, there was a rejection of offering. The man knew that whenever you go and see a prophet in the old in the old time, you were told to bring an offering if you were to be prayed for. So he understood the rules and regulations of how the, 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 the servants of the Lord were to be thanked. Hallelujah. So he took all things with him which were gift. To give to the Lord. That was in verse 5. Hallelujah. But we see that prophet Elijah rejected all those gifts from Naman. Uh, he rejected it. So in the point being is there are restorations that does not require any sacrificial offerings. There are some that will require a sacrificial offering. And there are some restoration that only just requires prayer. No offering is needed. Hallelujah. It can be that the person who's giving an offering is not a clean gift. It's not a clean offering. Because he brought those offerings away like gift. So it can happen that the Lord is saying, don't take any gift from this person because they are not clean. As much as we have prayed for them, they have been healed. And take note, in this instant also, there was no laying of hands because probably Naman received that sickness of leprosy due to sin which resulted in a curse he must have received that sickness through a curse there must have been something that he had committed that led him to be cursed with that sickness that is why we find the prophet of the lord not laying hands on him not even wanting to see him but gave him an instruction to say go to the Jordan river river and dip yourself seven times hallelujah and when he wanted to offer a gift to thank him, he said no. So there are restorations uh, which does not require any giving at all. So in this instant, there was no need for any giving because the person that was being prayed for uh, probably received that disease through a curse. And the prophet knew what the Spirit of the Lord said, that he mustn't take anything. Now we see his servant Gehaz running after because of the love of the things of the earth, the possessions. So he saw that how can a prophet allow this man to go with so much gifting? He went and took it. And then the prophet released the curse upon his life. Hallelujah. So meaning that if God says, don't take any gifting from the person and you're taking, you, the, the curse that was upon the life of Naman was transferred to Gehaz and his family and his whole household. Hallelujah. So there are some gifts that may look clean, but they may not be so because the source of their in of of their uh, 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 the source of where they are coming from is not a clean source. So the Lord knew that the the prophet of the Lord Elijah knew that those gifting were not coming with uh, 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 they, they they were laced with blood. Probably when they were fighting the other countries, they were blood. People were killed, so they were not gifted that were clean. So he rejected those gifts. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. So the Lord is saying he is a God of restoration. Your situation can change. The Lord, there is no situation that is bigger than God. Whatever that you have done, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you of all your transgression, of all your sins. You just come into repentance. You ask the Lord to forgive you of all of your sins and the Lord will forgive you. Hallelujah. But in order for you to qualify for the restoration, you have to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Hallelujah. You have to accept him. It is not possible for you to receive this restoration without being a child of God. So today is an opportunity. If you are not a child of God, I am here with you today to help you 
it is as easy as ABC. You just lift up your hands unto the Lord. Hallelujah. And you tell the Lord, you lift both your hands up. Hallelujah. So God be the glory. You say, Father Lord, I come into your presence as a sinner. I confess all my sins. Please forgive me. I didn't know any better. I promise not to go back to my old ways. I believe that Jesus Christ came and died for me at the cross of Calvary so that my sins can be wiped away. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. Be the Lord over my life. I promise to save you forever and ever. In the name of Jesus. Once we have done that, welcome to the body of Christ. You say I am saved. Welcome to the body of Christ. And I want you to lift up your hands so that I pray for you for the Holy Spirit to take over me, to take over you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for your children that now we have accepted you as their Lord and personal Savior. Holy Spirit, overshadow them right now. Holy Spirit, endure them right now. Baptize them in the Holy Ghost. And I believe if you have done that, you are now a child of the Most High God. Your life has been restored. You are no longer of this earth. But we have become the son and the daughter of the Most High God. And your life will never be the same again. I bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Have a blessed Sunday filled with joy, peace, love, and happiness. I believe you are blessed today. You know that there is no situation that is bigger than God. And if you listen to this prayer, you listen to this message, your life will never be the same again. But I want you to declare Psalms 51. Psalms 51. That was a repentance prayer. David repentance prayer. Hallelujah. I'll just read it with you guys so that you will understand the power of brokenness. Verse 1. God, be merciful to me because you are loving. Because you are always ready to be merciful. Wipe out all my wrongs, wash away all my guilt and make me clean again. I know about my wrongs and I can't forget my sin. You are the only one I've sinned against and I've done what you say is wrong. You are right when you speak and fail when you judge. I was brought into this world in sin and in sin my mother gave birth to me. You want me to be completely truthful, so teach me wisdom. Take away my sin and I'll be clean. Wash me and I'll be whiter than snow. Make me hear sounds of joy and gladness. Let the bones you crush be happy again. Turn your face from my sins and wipe up all my guilt, creating me a pure heart, O God, and make my spirit right again. Do not send me away from you or take your Holy Spirit away from me. Give me back the joy for salvation. Keep me strong by giving me a willing spirit. Then I will teach your ways to those who do wrong and sinners will turn back to you. God, save me from the guilt of murder, God of my salvation, and I will sing about your goodness. Lord, let me speak so that I may praise you. You are not pleased by sacrifices, or I will give them. You don't want burnt offerings. The sacrifice God wants is a broken spirit. God, you will not reject a heart that is broken and sorry for sin. 
do whatever good you wish for Jerusalem and rebuild the world of Jerusalem. Then you will be pleased with rain sacrifices and whole burnt offerings and bulls will be offered on your altar. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Even if you don't know how to do a sinner's prayer, how to do a, a, a prayer of repentance, asking for forgiveness from the Lord, even if you don't know how to do, to, to, to have to 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 to, to repent. Psalms 51, you just use that scripture. You ask the Lord God Almighty to forgive you. Wherever you might have gone wrong. Father, I bless this message. I seal it with the blood of Jesus. I bless it in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Whosoever will watch and listen to this message, their lives will never be the same again. They shall be blessed going in and blessed going out. And they shall receive a testimony. Their lives will be transformed eternally in Jesus' mighty name. I prayed hallelujah. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Have a blessed Sunday. Love you all. Ciao, ciao.